how many of us have them? Friends with benefits. How many of us have had those? Take a break for a moment and chit chat with me while we beat my face and get this beautiful look. Come on. Can we be lovers and friends? Tell me what you think about the whole friends with benefits setup. Welcome to another Lover Lane Chit Chat. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about the pros and cons of friends and benefits. As you guys know, I have been out here in these same streets, so I have had my fair share of all types of relationships. Boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, my least favorite. And at one point in my life, friends with benefits was my preferred type of relationship, if you will. So let me know your opinion while I share my opinion with you. I will beat my face for today. Let's jump into doing my eyes. Today's eyeshadow palette is from Wet n Wild. It's one of the three pan palettes in the shade I'm getting sunburn. Gold over the lid and then black on the uh, waterline like eyeliner. So. Let's get started while we chat. Here's the finished eye look. It's giving summertime in the Bahamas. Have you ever been involved in a friends with benefits type of situation? How did you feel about it? Was it your idea or was it just something that you went along with in hopes that it would turn into a full blown relationship? I have several friends that have entered into friends with benefits relationships hoping that they would turn into relationships and then I've even had men enter into friends with benefits relationships with me hoping that they would uh, turn into relationships even though in the beginning I said I didn't have a relationship. So as you guys know I'm very big on clear communication. I'm very big on someone's intentions. So for example when I meet someone and um, as you guys know I have like rapid fire questions I ask when I first meet men because I'm of the belief if we're not trying to achieve the same end goal, we don't need to speak in any capacity. Like, what was the point in my life, um, back after Fugitive Boyfriend, if you're wondering what happened with Fugitive Boyfriend or who Fugitive Boyfriend is, I'm going to link the video right here so you can check it out. During my relationship with Fugitive Boyfriend, I quickly realized, like, we were not friends, like, at all. So, after him, I decided I wanted to pursue someone that was like my friend and that we also have like that romantic connection and I got real lucky and I stumbled upon my PYT um I call him that because y'all we're five years apart and at that time he was 23 and I was basically 30 <laughs> well yeah I was 28 <laughs> so I was just like with him it was just so easy y'all we were legitimately friends like us being in a relationship was not what either one of us wanted but we were cool with you know a more cat it was the intention the intention for the whole relationship was for it to be a casual friends with benefits situation and we decided that before we even shared with each other so i feel like that is like a good idea so if you ever find yourself in a situation with someone where you're both like on like the same page it's good to get it all out on the table like all your expectations all of your wants needs and desires like in college all i was about was you know really just getting to know as many people as i could get to know and at that time i already knew marriage probably wasn't going to be for me i was going for like a long time a long-term partner like an open relationship kind of thing but the partner it, did I have one kids at the time? Oh yeah, so I was going for a long-term partner that was also going to be the father of my children. So we weren't going to be like in the confines of like any type of relationship. We were just gonna have an understanding essentially. Like I love saying like I'm looking for my homie lover friend, um, someone that I'm here with. <laughs> so that's what I was looking for for a long time, y'all. It wasn't until my dad passed away, like I told you guys, it wasn't until my dad passed away when I was 20, 26 or 28 that I made the decision that not only was I getting married, I was having two kids. Because I would do a friends with benefits like right now, but you that couldn't be what they're leading and offering with. Like a couple men that I met earlier this year when I like shared my philosophy on relationships and how I navigate them. They got excited when I was like, oh yeah, you know, friends with benefits is fine, although I'm looking for marriage, but I'm not going to knowingly deal with someone 
just as friends with benefits. Like it needs to have started as something else. I don't even know what time it is. It is story time for mission. All right, so for today's story time, I'm gonna tell a story about how uh, my friends with benefits, my PYT, how the situation popped up on us, y'all. I should have known better. Okay, so how I met my PYT was we went to the same gym together. Um, I think when I had met him, I don't think I had ever seen him before. So we met, we met in like, you know, the normal traditional way. Um, I'm walking. Hey, hey, I do not met, I do not answer to anything except for excuse me and my name. So first he just kept saying, hey, hey, and I was steady walking. And then he's like, excuse me. I whipped around. <laughs> I was like, yes. So we um, exchanged phone numbers. He had no kids. I had no kids. And then we like went on a date. We talked. He had shared with me that he had just got in a relationship. I had shared with him. I didn't tell him future boyfriend was in prison, but I did let him know that I had a boyfriend that I was living with, and we're no longer together. We don't live together anymore. You know, I left off the the prison part. He didn't need to know that. I did eventually tell him though. But when we first talked about it, I did not tell him. So we're hanging out, you know, a couple weeks go by and then we decide like, okay, since neither one of us want a relationship, but we like hanging out with each other, how about we just be friends with benefits? So we had this conversation before we even did anything with, with each other. So we're now friends with benefits and everything is going lovely, y'all. Like we were the type of friends with benefits that at the naked eye, it did look like a relationship because we were together every day. Like literally, I was with him every day. He was either at my house, I was at his house. So my PYT, y'all, he loved popping up at my house. Like I would be in my house, mind my business, and all of a sudden I hear the front door open. And it would be him. And it would be crazy because I had would have just spoken to him and he'll tell me like, oh, I'm staying there for the night, I'm tired, or I'm going to go play basketball with my friends. You know, he... Spending doing his own thing, which I am a big proponent of. Um, I did eventually end up telling PYT about uh, Future's boyfriend and him being in prison. And I told him a week before I knew that Future's boyfriend was getting out, wow. <laughs> getting out of prison. And then the day that Future's boyfriend got out, PYT stopped being responsive, y'all. He wasn't answering the phone. He wasn't responding to my text messages. So I give people three days. If I don't hear from you in three days, you quit. You don't. You just don't want me no more. Like, I'm out here working out, y'all, on the leg press, building my thighs, and here he come talking about some. Where you been? And I'm like, why do people do that? Like you know where I've been. I was. I've been where you left me at. So we talk, and he just let me know, like. He felt a way about his boyfriend and whatever, whatever, whatever. We fall right back in front of the routine. We're with each other all the time, like literally all every day. And then on the weekend, I'm literally with him. So fast forward, some uh, some more time goes by, and then just all of a sudden again, he becomes non-responsive. He uh, goes another three days without talking to me again. So I'm like, okay, now this is your second offense. Like, what the f? So, I'm minding my business, you know, go back to, you know, I had already been doing what I normally do. So one day, y'all, I'm at home, I literally just got home from work, I'm still in my work coat, still got my shoes on, and I hear a knock at my door, it's him. And he's just, oh, I missed you, blah, 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 and I'm confused because, sir, you stop talking to me. This is your second time doing it now, so now the first time I let you slide because, you know, you didn't really know what my situation was gonna be with future boyfriend. But this time was the reason because I don't recall doing anything. So he didn't really have like a reason. He just said, I had a lot going on. You know how they love to say, I had a lot going on. Yeah, whatever, whatever that means. So we fall back into our routine again. Like three weeks go by or something and he does it again. He becomes non-responsive. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? had it with him like what the f like what is going on this is the first time he caught me at caught me slipping at the gym i was like okay i'm not even gonna go to the gym on the same days i'm gonna go on totally different days y'all i started going the gym closes at i think 11. i started going to the gym at 10 o'clock at night i don't even like to be out my house that late it was that deep 
I even started going to a whole nother gym because I got tired of going to the gym that late just to avoid this man. So he did catch me slipping again, unfortunately. But he caught me slipping in my own house. So because I feel like, you know, you can pop a balloon on whenever you want. And we did have like a two day relationship. During that time, I gave him a key to my apartment since um, he was always just popping up on me anyways and I think that one time I had locked the door and he had felt a way about it he was like why are you locking <laughs> why are you locking doors mind you he was always on me about locking the door so as soon as the door is locked on him then it's a problem so I gave him a key y'all so I'm asleep I think it's like 11 30 midnight I hear like rattling Y'all, I wake up. So why is this man sitting on my bed with a pack of muffins from Marsh, from the bakery section? I'm like, what is going on? So mind you, I haven't spoken to this man. I'm pretty sure it's been more than three days, probably going on a week at this point. So I'm trying to figure out, number one, how'd you get in my house? I have forgotten to get a key, y'all. And number two, why are you in my house with muffins? <laughs> Fall back into our, our routine again. Again, y'all, he does it again. He becomes non-responsive. He's not um, answering my text messages. He's not answering my phone calls. And I did accidentally run into him at the gym during the time when he had become non-responsive. And he was trying to speak to me. Like, I seen him coming in my direction and I heard but ran out the front yes I know. I heard but ran out the front door and I'm not ashamed of it. So um some time went by, like a few days, and he pops up at my house again. Um so he pops up at my house and he lets me know that he has been having a lot going on in his life and that he misses us being friends and you know the whole spill yeah, 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 yeah. So he was like, what are you about to do? I was like, oh, I'm about to go to the gym. He said, okay, I'm coming to the gym with you. We go to the gym, y'all. We're at the gym at a time that I normally don't go. I believe it was like 5.30. I normally don't go at that time. I normally go like maybe three hours later, like eight o'clock. Or sometimes they even try to even go earlier, like in the mornings. So um, we're in the gym and we typically will work out separately. So unless you like see us walk in together or see us walk out together, you don't know that we're in there together. So at one point we're standing by each other and we're talking and a woman like comes up to where we are and she, she acknowledged me and then she's like talking to PYT and she's giving off the energy of like they do with each other. So I think nothing of it y'all like I mind my business, I take myself out of the conversation because I think we're about to leave. And I go and I get my stuff and he and I leave together. So, then we go uh, back to his place and y'all, why would we pull up to his place? The young woman from the gym is sitting in her car outside his apartment. <laughs> so, <laughs> Instead of parking by his apartment, he just continues to go further into the complex and parks down here. He was a smoker, so he was like rolling up. So he's parked down there, we're chit-chatting or whatever, and next thing you know, she comes down there. Like she drives down there. And she's directing all her energy towards him. And she's like, really? Really? This is what we doing? Really? And he's just like treating her like she's bothering him. Like, he's like, stop talking to me. Just stop talking to me. And I'm in shock. And she was like, let me get my stuff out of your house. Let me get my stuff out of your house. Um, she had like a phone charger there. Now, mind y'all, y'all. At this time, I only have one charger. So if I'm leaving my charger somewhere, it's somewhere that I plan to be at least every day. That's just like for me personally. Now I have three chargers, but at that time I had one. I had one. So wherever my charger was, was a place that I planned on being every day. So we drive back up to where his apartment is. He gets out of the car, leaves me in the car, goes upstairs, and uh, they're only upstairs for like five minutes. I don't even know. Then when they come downstairs, they're kind of like, low-key arguing with each other and she's like I hope she's worth it I hope she's worth it he's like she is she is and I'm just like who is this woman so normally I don't ask questions but in this situation I had to ask because 
it's in my face. Like I'm looking at it. So we then go um, to eat and while we're eating y'all, she's calling him. Now, but I can hear her through the phone. She's crying y'all. She's telling him that she loves him and she wants to know like why she's doing this to her. Like what did she do to him for her to be, for him to be cheating on her? Like she used the word cheating. Like for him to be cheating on her. And so mind y'all, I have been dealing with this man for months at this time. And we were together every day. Now we did have those three or four times where we did not speak, but it would maybe be four or five, at the most, maybe six or seven days. So I'm trying to figure out, when did he have time to be in a relationship with this woman? So I'm over here thinking, I'm looking, and normally, like I said, I don't ask questions. So he just volunteered the information. He was just like, okay, so this is a chick. So when he had stopped speaking to me the, this last time, he met her. So he claims he met her on a Sunday, banged her on a Sunday. She left her left her stuff at his house on the same day. That's how her stuff was there. So I guess at the time I didn't really care enough to put two and two together for you know to make sure it made sense because he had no commitments to me. Like he literally could do whatever he wanted to do. So the fact that he even, you know, I feel like he should, you know, tell me because it's in my face, I'm looking at it like, <laughs> you should tell me something. So, but he really didn't have to, you know, tell me anything. And I'm trying to think if I would've asked. I probably would've asked, maybe not then, probably like a little later, probably years later, <laughs> I would've asked him. So I'm like, okay, but she's saying that she loves you. Like, so she loves you after a day. So you're saying she's uh, crazy. He's like, yeah, she's crazy. I don't know what she's talking about. And y'all, when she called and she was crying and talked to him, he was speaking to her in a very comforting way. Like it was not giving, you've known this woman for five days. It was giving, you've been dealing with this woman for a while. You have made a commitment to this woman and she has just caught you cheating on her in 4k like <laughs> what, are, what like what are you talking about sir uh after we ate or whatever we back down my house and we fell back again into our routine and then our routine continued again until he went mia again but the last time he went mia was the last time for a while he didn't come back like days later. He ended up finding him a sugar mama that, you know, with finances like, but that's like, him and I even talked about this recently. Like he and I could never be together because he wanted someone basically, the woman that he chose, or the woman that chose him really, was baked on his life. And I know what that feels like. It's hard to let go of someone who bankrolls your life. And then typically when you get with someone who's bankrolling your life, they're doing it because they look at you as someone that they can't believe that they have and they're going to do whatever to keep you they don't care what you do like you can cheat like he y'all I, I can't even tell you how many times he cheated on that woman he was cheating on with me with man worse and i didn't even know he was with like when he would cheat on her with me i did not know he was with her like i knew she existed but he would always say she's crazy and they had broken up which be lies y'all like Years later, he started telling me like the truth, like with the woman that popped up, coming to find out he was in a relationship with her. He was lying to me, y'all. So basically, the whole time that he was with me, like every single day, she was still in the picture. She was just working a lot. So we would have time, actually no, there was like rarely any, like when we were good, I seen him every day. If I call him, he answers. If I text him, he answers. So I found it hard to believe, like how is she around? But come to find out, she just worked a lot and he was just really good about, keep, about keeping us separate, which it really would have only been an issue. It only became an issue when she saw me. Cause when I saw her, it was nothing because you know we're not together like you can't cheat on me but when she saw me it was an issue because y'all in a relationship so y'all it's crazy out here so be careful when you enter into a friends with benefits situation make sure that person also isn't in a committed relationship all right y'all that is my source of information i hope you enjoyed this information i enjoyed telling it let's go ahead and finish and blend out my face and bronze me up so we can get moving with